Alone, far in the wilds and mountains, I hunt, wandering amazed at my own lightness and glee. In the late afternoon, choosing a safe spot to pass the night, kindling a fire and broiling the fresh-killed game, soundly falling asleep on the gathered leaves, my dog and gun by my side. The Yankee clipper is under her three sky sails. She cuts the sparkle and scud. My eyes settle the land. I bend at her prow or shout joyously from the deck. The boatmen and clam diggers arose early and stopped for me. I tucked my trouser ends in my boots and went and had a good time. You should have been with us that day round the chowder kettle. I saw the marriage of the trapper in the open air in the far west. The bride was a red girl. Her father and his friends sat nearby, cross-legged and dumbly smoking. They had moccasins to their feet and large thick blankets hanging from their shoulders. On a bank lounged the trapper. He was dressed mostly in skins. His luxurious beard and curls protected his neck. One hand rested on his rifle. The other hand held firmly the wrist of the red girl. She had long eyelashes. Her head was bare. Her coarse straight locks descended upon her voluptuous limbs and reached to her feet. The runaway slave came to my house and stopped outside. I heard his motions crackling the twigs of the woodpile. Through the swung half-door of the kitchen I saw him, limpsy and weak, and went where he sat on a log and led him in and assured him, and brought water and filled a tub for his sweated body and bruised feet, and gave him a room that entered from my own, and gave him some coarse, clean clothes, and remember perfectly well his revolving eyes and his awkwardness, and remember putting plasters on the galls of his neck and ankles. He stayed with me a week before he was recuperated and passed north. I had him sit next to me at table. My firelock leaned in the corner.